Yeah, this is the North team. I'm uh, reaching the end of my uh, run and I haven't seen any tracks yet. I think it's a little early. Jim Spartilla is an animal physiologist from Drexel University in Philadelphia. Along with his colleagues, he's looking for a leatherback turtle. The leatherback is the largest extant marine reptile, and every year it makes a 2,000-mile journey to tropical Costa Rica from cool northern Pacific waters to lay its eggs. reptile makes such a titanic sustained effort or is this turtle more like a mammal hot-blooded if it is we would have at least one instance of a hot-blooded reptile and the argument that dinosaurs were hot-blooded would gain some support but how do you tell whether a turtle is hot-blooded you measure its breath From its breath, you can tell its metabolic rate, the rate at which body mass is converted into oxygen. High metabolic rate will signal hot-blooded, low metabolic rate, cold-blooded. get the relationship between its metabolic rate and its body size. Bigger animals have a lower metabolic rate than smaller animals. So if we're going to find out what dinosaurs did, we need to know the biggest reptile, the leatherback turtle. So a 300 kilogram leatherback is about as big as we can work with. The only thing bigger is a Nile crocodile, 24 feet long, which will eat half of our investigators. So we don't work with that animal. We've got 300 kilograms, take away 10 for the net. 290 kilograms is the weight, the mass, about 625 pounds. Now we've, we've put the mask on the turtle. It's just a five-gallon water jug. And we check to make sure that she can breathe freely, but that the mask is sealed. We use duct tape. Now you can, you can actually hear the air coming out. And um, we want to keep that valve in the, just keep it all down in there. We don't want sand on it. Keep it down until we're ready. I'll show you how to do it. By the next morning, two full bags of turtle breath have been collected for researcher Frank Palladino, more than enough to use for his experiment. He analyzes the turtle's breath for oxygen and carbon dioxide content. From that, he will derive the metabolic rate. That, in turn, will tell him whether the turtle is hot or cold-blooded. The results we've obtained here are very exciting and quite unique because they have shown us that although the leatherback's energy consumption is somewhat higher than we would expect for a reptile of this size, it is very unlike the large mammals such as elephants and birds that I've worked with in the past. Uh, the metabolism of these le leatherbacks is truly reptilian. But if the turtle is cold-blooded, and if dinosaurs were too, then right, how can they make the long place. journey from Alaska to warmer climates? For turtles, it may be that they can swim. But how would the dinosaurs have made the trip? The answer, says Spotilla, lies in their huge bulk. Oh. There we go. Big objects, whether they're houses or turtles, reptiles, mammals, all heat and cool slower than small objects. It's that combination of insulation and body size that accounts for it being warm. And we call that gigantothermy. And the leatherback is a great example of gigantothermy. And the only better example of gigantothermy was probably the dinosaurs. She's all set. As soon as she gets her bearings, 
I think she'll just walk into the water. The theory of gigantothermy, that an animal's sheer size helps conserve heat, suggests that dinosaurs could have had warm bodies and therefore could have had active lifestyles, even if they shared the turtle's reptilian metabolic rate. So is it finally settled? Dinosaurs were cold-blooded? Not so fast. Perhaps dinosaurs had some intermediate strategy, a body temperature higher than reptiles, but lower than mammals. Is there some other way to put the hot-blooded, cold-blooded issue to rest? Paleontologist Jack Horner. What we have here is a, a nest of baby duckbill dinosaurs, myosaurs, and an adult. And our problem is how you get from being a hatchling at 16 to 18 inches long up to an animal that's 25 or 30 feet long. We know that if we were to compare them to modern crocodiles or alligators, um, these kinds of animals grow about a foot a year. So if the dinosaurs grew like a fast reptile, they'd hatch out at 16 to 18 inches long, it would take them 20 years to get up to the size of an adult. Well, as it turns out, we have a way of determining how long it actually took, and that is by looking at the internal structure of the, of the bone itself. A series of femur bones belonging to several myosaurs from baby to adult gives Horner an almost direct look at a growing dinosaur. His pioneering work in bone histology, the microscopic analysis of the fossilized bone tissue, has brought surprising new facts to light. You can tell a great deal about dinosaur growth and metabolism by, by looking at the actual structure of the inside of the bone. And what we have right here is, is a thin section of the femur of a turtle. This is the exterior of the bone here. Uh, these little black areas are osteocytes. And what we're interested in are vascular canals, the, the actual spaces in which the vessels ran through the bone that carried the blood. In this particular case, we're dealing with a with a relatively slow-growing animal, and we have just a couple of, of vascular canals. If we look at the bone of a turtle, we get a picture of a cold-blooded animal's growth pattern. It's slow. Put the bone of a hot-blooded animal, a bird, under the microscope, and the picture is quite different. Vascular canals run throughout the bone, indicating high metabolism and fast pace of growth, both typical of hot-blooded animals. And now look at a bone from the baby myosaur. The vascular canals show up as white. Which does it resemble, turtle or bird? As you can see, a dinosaur has dense vascularization, just like we see in birds. In fact, there's actually more vascularization than we see in some of the large birds, like ostriches and, and emus and things like that. Now, if we remember this, and now will go on to an adult dinosaur. As you can see, there's, in the adult bone, there's lots and lots of these vascular canals where the little white spots are. And what's interesting here is the, is this dark line that you see running right down here. And that, that is an arrest line. When the animal was younger, it was growing relatively fast and it was growing and growing and growing. And, and at this particular point, growth slowed down and like, like us and like a lot of other animals, metabolism slows down. I mean, we do it when we're about 40 years old, and dinosaurs did it as well, but they appear to have done it when they were about four years old. For Horner, the many vascular canals and the thin arrest line settled the dispute. So the bone histology basically tells us that, that dinosaurs had relatively high pretty high metabolism, that they grew really fast, um, and that they were much more like, like birds than they were like reptiles, and were probably very active animals, like birds, and, and not sluggish like reptiles. The final word has not been spoken in this dispute. 
Some scientists say Horner's myosars may be a special case.